Hey guys, today I'm going to be updating you on my opinions of the Ionia Age Defying Serum. David Sinclair is the co-founder and this product says on the bottle certified space technology. So we talked about this in part one of this series. So this is part two in a series, but basically they found that um, when a certain bacteria was exposed to space conditions, that it displayed enhanced UV absorption properties and also other age-defying properties. So again, I'll have that linked below for you. And so now it's used in this skincare product. So if you're interested in that, I'll have my part one linked below, but this is gonna be all about my experience using this product over the last three weeks and answering the question, is it worth it or not? I did notice an immediate improvement in skin hydration and plumpness of my skin. And so as you can see in the clip here, this is after, immediately after application and then after 10 minutes of application. And I could see quite a difference there. Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to mention that I noticed also, so I always, whatever skincare I have um, left over after I apply it to my face, I always apply it to the back of my hands. And I have noticed a significant improvement in my hands. My hands are usually extremely dry this time of year in the winter. Well, I guess it's not technically winter yet, but you get my point. It's it's cold and the cold weather can be very um, irritating to the skin barrier. Before I started using this serum, my hands were very dry and irritated. After I started using this, my hands got in much better shape. I mean, I know I didn't film a before of my hand because I, I didn't really expect that to be something that I would notice such a dramatic change in, but um, yeah, it it made a big difference for me. And again, on the DeLavey Sciences website, they actually um, have data where they showed that there was a significant increase in hyaluronic acid production um, in a living tissue culture. I definitely see a huge improvement in skin hydration overall. And so finally getting to, is it worth it? Um, this is $125. So it's certainly not an affordable skincare product, I would say. It's definitely a higher end skincare product. So for me personally, I love it. And I actually am planning to repurchase it because I like it so much. That being said, in order for me to tell you that I absolutely think this is worth $125. I personally would like to see a couple of things happen. One, that either it's in a sunscreen formulation, so it's like added as like a, an SPF booster, or it's a, uh, or in the future it gets approved as an, uh, as a sunscreen. But um, I would at least like to see it like as an SPF booster for me, that's the thing that the vehicle that it's in. So it's a very thin consistency. Um, it, it's not sufficient on its own. Like you definitely need a moisturizer with it. Um, it, it would not be sufficient enough uh, by itself just because there's, there's not really um, occlusive ingredients. So even though it's very, uh, very hydrating, um, you still need occlusive ingredients um, to help lock in the moisture. So from my perspective, I would love to see this Bacillus Lysate used in a different medium or different vehicle of application. In my mind, what would make it worth it for me is if this were in a moisturizer formula that also was an SPF, and it had the bacillus lysate, then I would definitely say it's worth it because then you kind of have, you know, like a three in one kind of product. This product as it is, is just like an extra step to add to your skincare routine. I have seen a lot of improvements in my skin and I have seen, and I, and I very much love how it looks underneath my makeup. But for me to, tell you guys like, yeah, it's 100% worth $125. I personally would like to see it in a different formulation. 
um, that would encompass all the needs, so like all your skincare needs, with the Bacillus Lysate in that formulation. That being said, I love this and I'm going to repurchase it. So, um, and to that point, I actually saw that on their website, they're having a holiday sale. This is not an affiliate code or anything. And also disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by this company. I bought this product myself. I don't have any affiliation um, with this company at all. Um, I just wanted to let you know that there is a 20% discount code. Um, it was holiday 20. If you go on the DeLavey Sciences website, you'll see it to get 20% off your purchase. So because I like it so much, I am going to go ahead and repurchase it while the sale is going on because I do plan to continue to use this in my daily skincare routine. And furthermore, I'll be updating you over time um, if I see more improvements in my skin. Um, this is part two, so again, I'll have part one linked below, but there, there will be other um, sequential parts to this series. Um, I was just trying to be as honest as possible about all everything I've experienced with this product so far. Um, and I'm hoping that it can help you determine whether it's worth it for you or not, or whether it's an ideal product for you or not. So next I wanted to experiment with different application techniques for this serum. So as you probably know, with many hydrating serums such as hyaluronic acid, um, it's often beneficial to apply it to damp skin. So after you wash your face while your skin is still a bit wet to apply it then and then apply your moisturizer over top. However, I do not recommend doing that with this product. I tried that and my skin burned to the high heavens. Like it was pretty intense. It did not, it does not burn at all when I apply it to dry skin or when I apply with different methods as I'll explain further, but applying it to damp skin definitely caused my skin to burn. And I believe the reason for this is actually that the third ingredient on this serum is alcohol. So alcohol is often demonized in skincare because um, people say it's drying, which is true that solvent alcohols by themselves are drying to the skin. That is true, but when they're used in certain formulations, it can actually help with absorption of the product. So it's not as bad of an ingredient as it's made out to be across the skincare community often. But um, however, I do think that, you know, applying it to my skin while it was wet, I think that likely with alcohol being so high up on the ingredient list, applying it to wet skin um, probably initiated the stinging sensation that I experienced. And furthermore, this also has an essential oil and I am someone who is sensitive to fragrance and essential oils in my skincare. Um, I do kind of have to be careful with that. This has um, geranium oil in it. Um, again, I haven't had issues with this burning, just applying it to dry skin, but applying it to wet skin, again, it burned a lot. But um, I'm thinking that the combination of the alcohol being high up on the list and perhaps the geranium essential oil in combination because when you apply something to wet skin, it also enhances the absorption. So, so that was increasing the absorption of the alcohol and the geranium essential oil. So my theory at least is that that's why it didn't work for me to apply it to wet skin. Um, however, I've experimented with different ways of applying this. So, um, so as I told you first, the first time I used it, I just applied it to dry skin and I did notice um, an improvement in skin hydration. Um, so I've tried that, applying it first and putting my moisturizer over top once that dried, sunscreen on top of that. This might come as a surprise because honestly it's kind of surprising to me too, but the way that I've found that this actually works the best for my skin personally is to, I, I actually apply it over my moisturizer. So to the point that I made initially about 
it being often beneficial to apply skincare to damp skin. So for me personally, I apply my moisturizer on my skin um, as soon as I wash my face. So while my skin still is damp, I don't dry it with a towel or anything first. I just immediately wash my face and apply my moisturizer. I use the Illy Yoon Ceramide Moisturizer. I'll have that linked below if you're interested um, in what moisturizer I use, but I apply that. Then I immediately go in with my sunscreen afterwards. And then as my last step, actually, I go in with this as my last skin care step. And that has worked really well for me. Um, actually, um, and then I immediately apply my makeup on top of that. So my foundation immediately on top of this serum. And if you are a makeup wearer, I think you would love this as a primer for your makeup. It my it works so well under makeup. I, I've been really impressed with how well it works under makeup. It keeps my skin looking hydrated, but I don't find that it looks overly oily. So I've had makeup on for about nine, 10 hours at this point. So it might look a little bit oily at this point. I haven't touched my makeup up or anything today. Um, what I do on a daily basis is I just apply, you know, after I apply this serum, I put my foundation on and I actually don't use powder on a daily basis. So to me, I kind of like having glowy skin um, because my whole because for many years I struggled with really dry skin. So like to me, I like my skin to look glowy. Um, it's just sort of a preference for me, but I definitely have not found that this makes my skin look oily or anything. It, it does give a very hydrated, um, and to me, a dewy look without looking oily because I've definitely used moisturizer and moisturizers in the past that had a lot of emollients in them that my skin definitely looked pretty oily. Um, but I don't find that to be the case with this one. So back to the point about the application techniques, I think there will probably be two main criticisms. And so I'm going to go ahead and address, address those. But the one criticism I think will be, well, if you're applying your moisturizer first and then applying this on top, then you're probably not, you know, your skin is that's probably blocking some of the absorption of the serum and so you're probably not getting all of the benefits and while that is a good point i have just found that this is what works best for my skin i have seen noticeable improvements in my skin though since i first started and as far as hyperpigmentation the hyperpigmentation has been reduced uh, my skin feels more um, my skin feels and looks more hydrated so while that could um so while that is a valid point this is just what works the best for me and i think for each person that you should just experiment yourself and see what works best for you with skincare but so the other point i want to make is that dermatologists always recommend that sunscreen should be your last step in your skincare routine and so that's what I want to address here since I applied this on top of my sunscreen. Um, again, I'm just telling you my experience and my opinion. Um, I can't personally tell you what to do, but I'm hoping that by sharing my experience that I can help you determine whether the product is worth it for you and how you might want to try to use it. Um, so I talked about in the previous video how there was extensive research done on this ingredient uh, supporting that it has enhanced UV protective properties. So just a brief recap if you haven't seen that video. The bacillus lysate is an extract from a microorganism called bacillus pumilus and it was found that when exposed to space conditions actually that it displayed enhanced UV absorption properties. And so in the patent, they talk a lot about envisioning this in a, um, so in the patent, they talk a lot about envisioning the bacillus lysate used in sunscreen formulations. However, currently this is not, however, currently bacillus lysate is not an approved FDA SPF. Um, so there are only certain 
compounds that have been approved by the FDA to be marketed as a sunscreen. And so reading the patent, it looks like they strongly envisioned this being you marketed as a sunscreen. Um, you know, I don't know where they stand with the FDA. I, I'm personally hopeful that the FDA will one day approve this as a um, as an SPF, but um, currently it's not um, on the list of approved uh, FDA uh, SPF ingredients. So, but for me personally, and again, I can't tell you what to do for me personally, after viewing the data, I personally feel comfortable applying this on top of my sunscreen as my final step. Um, that's just what works for me. And I feel comfortable doing that uh, after seeing the data. So a couple of other points I wanted to make. I actually, um, so I actually had the idea to apply this over makeup. I was running late one day and forgot to apply the serum and I just put my foundation over my sunscreen and I just had the idea to see how it would work over makeup and I was expecting it to not turn out well, but surprisingly it looked really nice and it didn't disrupt the makeup actually so that was really cool i mean if this was approved as an spf then i would be like shouting from the rooftops that this is what everyone needs to use over their makeup because everyone's always asking you know like how do we reapply spf over makeup um without disrupting the makeup and it's not such an easy issue to get around honestly but this worked really well over makeup and so that's another reason that i remain hopeful that maybe one day the fda will approve this for me the thing that was the most exciting to me was the data on the enhanced uv absorption properties um and i know i keep making this point over and over but it's just because i can't tell you that you can use this as a sunscreen right because it's not fda approved as a sunscreen but i personally am really excited about the data on the enhanced uv absorption properties one last point i do always recommend doing a patch test behind your ear um, because you know how i said that it burned after i applied it to my damp skin um, again i haven't had that sensation applying it via the other methods. But um, if you are someone with sensitive skin, or even if you don't have sensitive skin, I always recommend doing a patch test behind your ear. So basically you just like apply any new product you're gonna be using just like behind your ear, wait 24 hours, make sure you don't have any sort of adverse reaction and then apply it uh, to your face. I always recommend that. Um, that. That's just a safe way to go about it, I think. So I hope that this answered some questions that you might have about this product. I'm personally really excited about the product and to see what the future holds for the Levy Sciences, for the Bacillus Lysate. Will it be FDA approved as an SPF? I think that would be amazing. If you like this video, please subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post in the future. If you are new here, I'm a chemist who loves skincare and makeup artistry, and I really enjoy making videos talking about the ingredients in cosmetics. So if that sounds interesting to you, I hope that you'll subscribe. Yeah, if you made it this far in the video, leave me a purple heart and a space emoji. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.